The state is the biggest killer, biggest oppressor uh, of all. I mean, throughout history, you know, this state has killed more people with wars and uh, pogroms and, and mass murders and of one sort or another. Uh, you can just point to it at any time in history and you can see where these criminals have actually perpetrated their acts of violence. So from my standpoint and, you know, the things I put in Anarchism the Black Revolution, and I wrote that when I was in 1979 when I was in a control unit in Marion. It's a special high security unit. At that time, it was used also for behavior modification, forced drugging, uh, and psychiatric tricks and, and methods of uh, breaking your will. Uh, there had been 10 people killed in that unit uh, and numerous people driven insane. I was fortunate in one sense in, the, in that when I went in the unit, there had been years and years of struggles by prisoners to resist it. Uh, and we fought our way out of there. I, I was able to get my way out of there for sure uh, through lawsuits and letters written and then there was demonstrations around the prison and I was fortunate to get out of there alive. A lot of people got killed in there. Uh, so I wrote Anarchism in the Black Revolution in there. One, to declare to the world that I was an anarchist. Uh, two, we have to deal with race and class issues in our movement, in the anarchist movement. We cannot... At that time, people pretended that there was no such thing as racism, you know, or, or it wasn't a big issue. I had a person tell me, oh, that isn't something we worry about. I said, I'm, I'm sure it isn't something you worry about since all of you are white, you know. I said, I, I'm sure it isn't something you worry about. Uh, but it's something they worry about in 1997 since the Klan is spread all over the United States and right-wing forces run the state and and, uh, you know, they're, they're in power. They commit crimes and terrorism all over. It's something that you're going to worry about today. And as time goes by, it's something you're going to worry about more and more. You know, it's going to be because we'll look up and we'll have a, an outright fascist dictatorship sitting over us if we don't do or say anything. If you're going to beat back racism, the feds are not going to help you do it. And the civil rights laws in this country are not functional. They are not functional, and they are not meant to be functional. They've been functional in terms of creating a black middle class in this country, but they are not functional when it comes to beating back white supremacy, violent white racism. It's not, they're not functional for that. That requires a mass movement, and that's what we've been doing in the South. Uh, ever since I got out of prison, almost from the first day I got out of prison, since the first day I got out, uh, I had to deal with the black community up in arms over the police murder of a black man uh, in the city jail. And the daughter of this man formed an organization called the Concerned Citizens for Justice that I became involved with and ultimately became the president of. That, uh, that organization uh, ultimately became the Ad Hoc Coalition Against Racism and Police Brutality, a region-wide organization dealing with racist violence all over the South, of which there's still a substantial amount. You just know about the church burnings. There's been a hell of a lot of burnings of people's homes, activists particularly, there's been a hell of a lot of shootings of people. Shoot, I mean, you know, like drive-by shootings, racist drive-by shootings that purportedly had stopped happening 30 years ago. The climate is beset, you know, with, with the economic inequality, the increase of that, with the building of prisons, limitless acts of police terrorism, all of these things are being allowed to happen by those in authority. And it's really important to understand that. That's why we can't get fooled by this thing about the good cops. Well, the good cops are the ones letting the so-called bad cops do the dirt. The, the conditions for this kind of terrorism and this racism is not an accident. It's not a result of somebody's bad thinking or some, some ideas in white folks' head or something like that. It's not a question of that, actually. This government is the criminal that allows this to go on. So I live in an area where, in fact, uh, you know, there are, there are people who have a particular set of problems. But I don't, after having been here, I haven't seen anything that I didn't recognize. You know, uh, and by that I mean, you've got the same set of problems. Uh, they may not be riding around, uh, the Klan may not be strutting around in the community, you know, in a, in a robe. Maybe they're wearing a blue suit. But they, <laughs> they're, they're the same, there's the same force. You've got a serious problem in this in the, in the Bay Area with police brutality. I see all kinds of people rising up. I see movements developing. But what I don't see is, I see radicals or activists talking to each other. What I don't see is people in the community reach into the community where these people are the actual victims. Malcolm X said, if you want action, 
I said, uh, you got to wake the people up. And, and I'll say, uh, not only do you have to wake the people up, you got to get over there and help them mobilize and build autonomous formations in their communities. Uh, anarchism is not going to, to go by some wind or, or, or you know, or just, just some belief or somebody's just going to one, one day wake up and say, oh, I'm an anarchist. It's not going to happen like that. We're, you know, you have to work, you have to talk to people, you have to, you know, s spread ideas. That's what you have to do. And you can't be satisfied just to look around and see people look like you when there's a city which is diverse as this one is. I think that's a cop out. I think that's a damn sellout. So I really think it's a responsibility on us to get up and do something about that. There, there's not going to be any reforms. One thing that was proven by the civil rights period and is being proven now, we're not going to get the kind of reforms to do away with racism under this system. It's not going to happen. This system has to be toppled, dismantled, and destroyed. Thank you very much.